Mm, and uh, the GTK application development on Open Moco. And um, well, so I have to switch here to my first uh, slide. So what am I going to talk about? Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview about the um, platform, the software platform and the hardware platform of uh, OpenMoco. It's uh, quite often a bit difficult to get the information because currently they still spread out um, across the mailing list, across the wiki and across different um, websites. Um, this is currently in the state of change. Uh, OpenMoco has hired a couple of people who are going to um, maintain full-time the wiki and the technical documentation. They have hired um, a community manager with whose name is Michael Schilo, who is there to um, make the communication between the community and um, the developers. So I'm myself an um, independent developer and oops, I'm just playing here, sorry for that. Um, group, that's the wrong direction. Um, that's, I'm, I'm always playing with things that I have my fingers, obviously a bad habit, I think. Huh? Um, so um, the, the platform, so I'm myself an independent developer and the, why the, the reason or the idea of talking here is simply to explain how easy it actually is to make development for a mobile phone, for an embedded device. Huh? Um, because I felt for me, like um, I have been doing some GTK development before and I felt that the hurdle to actually get into development for OpenMoco seemed to be really high until you have figured out how it actually works. And once you know how it works, it is really easy. Okay, so giving you the overview over the hardware platform, so what's currently happening, what's happening in future. Then talking a bit about the um, software platform and then what you need actually for the development environment, how you're going to set that up. And I again pressed, no, I pressed on the wrong button here. Uh, development environment and then actually my favorite, how you get started in 15 minutes from um, sitting down on a computer, having the first application running on the device. Hmm? And last not least, I'm going to talk a bit about the GPS application that I have been development, uh, developing, which is called Tango GPS. Okay, so getting the right button here this time. So the hardware platform, um, and that is always needs some explanation. So finally, they figured out how they're going to call it. Um, the first um, edition of the phone is called the Neo 1973. Um, it's this one here, and this is now out of stock. And the next edition is going to be called the Neo Free Ronda and is uh, hopefully coming into sale in about April. About April is the idea. And um, what is a platform? And the uh, really important thing is actually don't look at it like a phone. Look at it as a complete mobile computer, a Linux computer in this tiny um, form factor. Uh, so don't think like um, about, oh, I have to develop for a phone. We have now a little computer in this size uh, with everything, with a screen on it, which is actually as performant as a computer probably six, seven years ago. So you have 120 megabytes of RAM in, inside of it. You have a screen here on this uh, phone of 480, 640. You have, and that's why I say you have additionally have a GSM modem, so it makes it a phone too. You have a GPS, and on the next version of the phone, of the free runner, you will have a Wi-Fi inside so you can connect wherever you have a wireless network. And last not least, a very cool thing of the phone is you do have a USB networking, um, a USB connector, and you have both. You have device mode and host mode. And that actually means that you can um, connect a printer to the phone. You can actually connect everything that is USB onto this phone. Yeah? This is just cool. It's a computer. It's not a phone, it's a computer. Yeah? And um, yeah, so get some more ideas about far beyond of, of being on a phone um, because you have USB. Uh, next phone, actually, the free runner will have host mode with, um, which is powered. The current uh, phone here does not have electricity, so you need to have a powered USB hub for actually doing something with it. Okay, I'll go on. Okay, the software platform here. And this is really the stripped down version because if you go on the website, you have these great um, little uh, charts with all the components. But actually, the phone, the most important um, uh, software components that you need to know about is the X. You have X running on it. 
currently have GTK running and you're using Open Embedded. Anybody here who has been using Open Embedded before? Some people, some few ones. Okay, so Open Embedded, um, a word about Open Embedded. Open Embedded actually is some kind of Gen 2. Uh, you have all heard, I guess, about the Gen 2 Linux distribution. And um, what Open Embedded is doing for you, you have the recipes, and the recipes actually just grab the software from wherever it is, take it into your cross compiling environment, and just compiles everything for you and packages it. Uh, so the whole pain that you had like five, six, seven years ago developing for Open Embedded, always having the, the development environment, setting up the cross compile tool chain, all that is gone now. All this hassle, all these headaches is being taken over by Open Embedded and you have nothing anymore to do with that. So I want to, one more time, I want to say that um, what definitely is, um, this it's always difficult with OpenMoku to figure out what they really are going to do. It's a bit difficult to get all the information. What OpenMoku says they really want to do is they want to stick with X. They are going currently to port even Qtopia to X. Um, you have even other platforms that I've seen outside. I think Newstep is developing for it too. So it will definitely be X applications. Everything that's currently running under X, you actually can easily port over to OpenMoco. GTK is something that will stay definitely in the open mobile um, world too, because the Limo Foundation, with all the big um, players, uh, intend to support GTK. And well, Open Embedded is a uh, whole system by itself and for sure is going to stay for long. Okay, yeah, here, two more words about Open Embedded. Um, so it is um, Open Embedded is a build environment including cross-compiler. And the great thing is, um, again, that you have something that is called the Moco Mail file, which is doing an automatic setup. So what you do is you just get the Moco Mail file from the web, you just make make open um, make make file and then it just starts to get everything from the web fully automatic yeah? it just sets up all your um, cross compiling environment and um, it takes a bit more than 50 minutes that i have to admit actually it takes about eight nine hours um, so you <laughs> have to do something in between but once that's set up you have your complete cross compile environment just sitting there ready uh, for you to use hmm? Okay, next, um, yeah, how to get started in 15 minutes, well, once you have done the eight hours. Huh? Um, okay, so here I have, that, I have that written. So what you do, you get the Moco make file, make sec up, get more than one cup of coffee because it now takes eight hours or maybe even 10, 12 hours, but it works. It works absolutely well. It is perfectly well maintained. And then what you do afterwards, you make Open Moco development, uh, development image, which just gets the whole image compiled for you, ready for flushing onto the device. Yeah? And you have nothing to do, it's, no, it's absolutely no brainer. That's the interesting, the important thing here um, to say. That's it, that's it, just three steps and you can go. Okay, what have I been using here for the, um, for the software? I've been using uh, Anuta, Esma IDE. Um, and Glade because it just makes it so easy and the auto tools and actually whatever kind of um, IDE you want to use and Yuta simply produces for you the, um, the source code and you just can go um, later on you make um, you build your distribution so Anuta makes for you the um, tarball and then you have in the next step the, um, the bit bake recipe and that goes again for um, open embedded. You have a recipe like this. And in the recipe, you just put into the location of your tarball, and it just takes the, um, the tarball, automatically compiles it, and produces a package out of it. That's it. Yeah? So um, once again, in order to develop for this device, what you have to do is you set up the open embedded build environment, by the three steps that I just told you. You just get the Moco make file, make setup, um, make a development image, and uh, in the next step, you develop your application exactly like on the desktop. Is it an application that runs on the desktop? You set up this bitback file. Actually, this is just all that you need here. And um, in the next step, you do just execute the command bitback here for me that is Tango GPS, and then you have a ready-made 
package already. Yeah? So like um, when you have your normal distribution for SUSE, you would have the RPM, or for Red Hat, if you have the RPM, for Debian, you have the DEPS. So you come to this point, and you have it ready-made there um, just for um, installing it on your phone. Okay, so a few words about Tango GPS. It's um, actually just a mapping application which is designed for the NEO. And it uses uh, Gconf, Dbus, Libcurl, and uh, GDK Pixbuff. So just to give you an idea what I'm using in it. And I'm developing on the desktop and just making the cross compiler on. So without anything, I just um, develop on Unuta, make my distribution, have my tarball, and uh, Open Embedded just all does the rest for you. Huh? So nothing big. And this is just um, a picture here of it. And um, what I'm usually using here, the upper part, is just a normal menu. I have um, normal GTK buttons here. That is just GTK buttons. I have a GTK slider. I have uh, labels here. And the bigger part is um, just a big GTK pick stuff. And um, what I'm using here for Tango GPS, I'm using the uh, maps from the OpenStreetMap project. I don't know if you've heard about that. OpenStreetMap is um, user um, supplied, uh, user developed, user made um, card data um, on OpenStreetMap org. So uh, actually, we have no problems here with any copyright restrictions, uh, taking Google Maps or something like that, because we can just use them for free. And you see, they have in many, many places already a perfect state. Okay, so future development, um, what am I going to for sure? Um, the next things that are going to come is a friend finder. And that is so interesting, again, why not just having um, a phone here, but it is a Linux computer plus a GPS. And the idea is simply that you can um, go and you can find where are your friends. Um, you can set up actually who can see you or who cannot see you. So you have the choice for doing that. Um, then next thing that always goes together with any kind of GPS implication is the point of interest. Yeah? So that you can put in your own point of interest, um, you can share them with other people back and forth. There's lots of development going on inside of OpenMoco 2 and the real idea here is to use um, the Java protocol which actually supports um, XMPP2. Um, so um, the, uh, no, the XMPP protocol of Java supports GPS location data this way around. Um, so that you have both, you have um, the, uh, the possibility of doing um, uh, communication, instant messaging, and you can exchange your position with a well-known protocol which is supported by Google and others. Um, track management, and for sure the last thing, the interesting thing is OSM integration, OpenStreetMap integration. So for those um, that are actively tracking streets, um, they have the chance of using, um, open, uh, of using Tango GPS for making streets for OpenStreetMap project. Okay, why to develop for OpenMoco? My last minute here. It's fun. I tell you, I've seen that I did my test out before, like with people um, putting it into the hands and everybody loves to walk around and see the red dot walking over the little map huh? and uh, see how many meters you have been walking. It's really, I just can tell you, get one of the phones and um, enjoy it. Most open platform for now, uh, Google Android somebody, huh? where is the code? Hmm? Hmm? Not open, not open. Okay, uh, many things to be done for open Moco. Uh, you can easily get into it because there are many, many little things where you just have immediate success, like even just things like a alarm clock or lots of configuration things are still missing. Um, then why GTK? Well, it's still a good option for the future. Um, there are some, um, most likely OpenMoco is going to use the EFL2, the Enlightenment Foundation libraries, but uh, with GTK you still have a good uh, track into the future and um, for example Nokia is using some kind of GTK2 on their memo platform and last not least I simply believe it's a great opportunity for FOSS uh, developing for an open phone because we are now in the right position um, to make a difference for the future. Thanks a lot for listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.